Google Earth. Well, Google Earth is one of those features or functions that there really isn't a comparison between LAN Desktop and Civil 3D because it's a function that only exists in the Civil 3D world. But with that being said, if we would like to leverage Civil 3D as a tool to supplement our LAN Desktop workflow, then let's take a look at how we can leverage that tool such that it can be effective for us in LAN. The biggest advantage with Google Earth is it gives us the ability to take the geometry that's in our drawing and immediately push the data out onto Google Earth so we see how it interacts with the surrounding areas as well as bring data in from Google Earth into our environment here such as a site image or even a uh, surface or, or contours to uh, get some elevational data about what we're working on. So in this case my drawing is complete. I've got perhaps a topography of a school site that I've worked on. Uh, it is on a projection which is what's important so we're going to come down and we'll take a look at the drawing setup and we'll see that my zone, my drawing is currently set to USA Texas State Plains South Central US feet. So that's been set in LAN desktop. I'm good with that. We'll go ahead and save the drawing. I'm going to, let's even close out of it, which in land we can't because we've got the SDI mode. Well, we'll leave it open for now. We'll let it bark at me about the opening it read only. I don't really want to change it. We'll come to Civil 3D. Let's go ahead and open that same file. Once again, knowing that it's probably going to bark at us a little bit. So we're going to go into land uh, projects, land desktop projects 2009. We're going to come down to the school project DWG and I'm going to grab that same file that we're in already. And it barks at us as we would expect. We'll open it as read only save with an earlier version of the software. It's telling us that if we're going to save it here it's going to update, update some of those objects to the newer version. That's fine. My goal is right now just to leverage my ability for visualization with Google Earth. So I've opened up my drawing and what I would like to do is I'd like to see this in its context with the surrounding area. If you know anything about Google Earth it's, it's kind of address driven and I really don't know the address of the school but since it, since it is sitting in a known projection I can use its location to find where it is in Texas. Now the first thing just to make sure that the projection moved across I'm gonna come over to my tool space and go to settings and if I right click on school site we can say edit drawing settings and we'll see options very similar to what we see in LAN desktop. You'll see that even though it was done in LAN when I migrated into Civil 3D it still maintains USA Texas South Central US foot. So I'm happy with the projection that has been established. Let's go ahead. We will output this now. We'll say publish to Google Earth and we'll give it the name just uh, school data. We'll be fine for right now. Do I want to export everything? No, we'll just select some entities to export. I'm going to export perhaps some of the buildings. Maybe we'll come in and grab some of the geometry here for the playground. Uh, I could grab a couple trees, maybe uh, a property line or two around the outside so I can see where I am in relationship to the edge of the property. Okay, so I'm, I'm satisfied with that for right now. Let's go ahead, we'll click next. We continue on with the wizard. It knows what projection we're in, so it'll be able to accurately map it into Google Earth. Elevation-wise, I'm going to drape the entities on the ground. That way, Google Earth does have elevation information associated with it, so if the elevations in my drawing, which this could just be on a flat elevation zero, won't go subterranean. They won't be inside the planet, but instead will lay up on top of the surface. So I'm going to write it out to school site KMZ. We'll give it KMZ1 because I may have one in there already. We'll publish it. That is published. We'll go ahead and click view. It will immediately launch Google Earth and it will navigate us to Texas just north of San Antonio to where we see our school site. So we see the building that was collected in the field lines up with the building that uh, physically exists. We see our property lines as well as the, uh, the playground area. Satisfied with how that looks, we can start to do a little visual to see uh, the surrounding area, what's going on with that. If we were going to be doing any improvements or anything, 
we'd have some idea if there was a large building here, if we were going to be doing an extension of the parking lot or whatever, we could have some idea of what the impact would be with the surrounding area. So very, very quick uh, visual tool that we can use. Other things I can do with Google Earth, if I wanted to, we could pull back in, I'll shut off the line work, we could pull back in the aerial photography as well as some contour data. So let's flip back to Civil 3D. And in this case, it's not an output, but an insert. So we are going to insert Google Earth. This is where we could bring in the Google Earth image. We could also bring in the surface, which would give us the contours. Now, in this case, it's good to give us an idea of high and low spots, but the contours themselves are not anything we're going to do design off of. They're, they're more the equivalent of like USGS contours. So while they will give us a, a little bit of, uh, if we have no recon on what's out there, it'll give us some idea of what is there but uh, certainly not to the level we would um, you know, leverage for design or anything. So in this case, I'm not really worried about the surface itself. If you take a look at the surface tool in this presentation, you'll see how we could actually have brought the surface in and then push it back to land. But for right now, I'm just going to take a look at the image. We'll select the coordinate system I'm currently in, and we see it's automatically integrated the aerial photo. So I am pleased with that. Let's go ahead. I'm going to save that as just a different name in the same site here. We'll save it as school site image. And because I'm going back to an older version of land, we'll go into 2007 here. We'll save that. And it's been exported. Let's hop back to land desktop. We will open up a new drawing file here that being the school site image. And when we open that up on the screen, we see we've got the geometry we started with before as well as the aerial photo. So very, very useful tool with respect to visualization. I saved it as a different file name for a couple of reasons. You saw a dialog box there about upgrading some objects. And I really, if my intent is to come back, I really don't want to upgrade the objects. Instead, what I could do is just save this drawing that only has the image in it. And then I could x-reference that image into my original file. So very, very powerful tool. It's got a wizard interface. allows us to leverage uh, surface images as well as surface data. We can publish data to Google Earth so that we can see how it interacts with the surrounding areas. Uh, very, very useful tool throughout the design, construction, data collection process that was absolutely not available at all in Land Desktop.